morning. It's Monday, my favorite day of the week. But even though I will proclaim my love for Mondays all across the internet, I still don't feel like I have hit the productive zone yet. I prefer to ease into my week with tasks that don't require a lot of brain power or concentration or creativity. And so I call Mondays my potato days. If you've never heard of a potato day before, I would define it like you're sort of a couch potato, but you're still getting work done. So I'm still working on the computer, but I'm not necessarily doing deep work like writing or filming, although today is different because I'm taking you through my entire potato day and exactly what it looks like. But I first heard this term from Jules Acree. She is another YouTuber that talks about intentional living, personal growth topics. Go check her out if you haven't already. And it just really resonated with me because I didn't want to expect a ton out of myself on Monday and I would actually feel really guilty that I didn't get a lot of stuff done on Monday. So instead I worked with my energy levels and I said how can we still make Monday productive but in a different way. And so it's a potato day. And the surprising thing is slowly easing into my week actually makes my Tuesday through Thursday way more productive than if I tried to do the hardest tasks on Monday. And then Friday, of course, is just like a catch-all, catch-up kind of day. I'm so ready for the weekend, so I'm not doing a lot of deep work on that day either. What would make me so incredibly happy is to help you love Mondays just as much as I do and have it be a day that you get excited about. And so maybe you need to turn Monday into a potato day as well. And if you're thinking, well, I don't work from home, I this doesn't necessarily resonate with me, stick around until the end of the video because I'm gonna share some ideas on how you can practically integrate a potato day into your own life. When I sit down at my desk around like nine, nine 30 and open up my laptop. This is where I transition into my startup routine. So I set my time tracking app, which I use a tracker. I just like to know what I'm spending my time on throughout the week and how many hours I'm spending on my business. And then I will go in, check a couple emails and respond to anything that feels urgent. Then I will transition into my actual task list. And for that, I set my phone on do not disturb. But here's a trick, I use the driving option because you can set your own message that sends out to people who text you. And I just feel like it's a like polite way to say that I'm working. I know I don't have to re you don't have to respond to text right away, but it makes me feel better. I'd love it to be a separate box between this. Okay. Now I'm going to move into my actual task list. So there is a project that I want to flesh out. I'm starting a new Etsy shop for Notion templates. And then this is my design and editing week. So I like to do weekly themes. Last week was my content creation week. So that was heavy into filming and writing. And now it's designing. So I have some blog post pins that I need to design, some thumbnails I need to design. And then there is a blog post that isn't ranking very well on Google anymore that I want to update. I know I said I didn't do much writing on potato days, but I did have to do a quick announcement email. So that is done and it's about 1145 right now. I'm going to try to squeeze in one more task, flesh out a that Etsy shop project that I wanted to work on, see what tasks I need to do to get that set up, and then we'll break for lunch. Anytime I have a new project, I like to create a page in my projects database in Notion. So this says in progress, and then I also like to flesh out the type of goal that it is. So an act goal is actionable, clear, and has a time trigger. That is part of my six week sprint goal setting system, just to make sure that it is a goal that you can actually achieve. Then I have the category that it is. So this is a product or launch. I have the quarter that I'm tackling it in. So this connects to my quarterly database. 
when I want to complete it. I really think I can do this in a week because I have opened an Etsy shop before and I already have some graphics completed. The deadline, so I've got three days left if I'm completing this. Yeah, by Friday, we'll keep that there. And I'm starting it this week. So this progress tracker here will update when I add in the task down here. So now that I have some tasks here, it's showing my progress bar up at the top. So when I check things off, that progress bar will update so I can always see where I am and how much further I have left to go to complete this project. Usually my projects are a little bit more involved than four tasks and I don't complete them in a week, but this was a small one. However, I wanted to still add it into my projects database rather than a task because there were a few tasks that needed to be completed to complete the actual project. can't say it's the healthiest lunch, but I need to go grocery shopping. During lunch, I will usually do one of two things. I will read a few pages in a nonfiction book, or I'll watch an episode of YouTube. Sometimes it's a little more business related, like best practices for YouTube and all that stuff, just to kind of keep me in the frame of mind of work, but not actually work, if that makes sense. We have on how exactly the algorithm works. So what's changed. All right, back to work and I am going to start on those blog post pins. Canva is what I use for blog post pins because it's very user friendly and I can create templates where I can just swap out the text and the photos to create multiples of pins at once. Pins are done for one post but at 2.30, which is almost that time, I have a meeting, a Skype mastermind meeting with a couple girls where we've been just meeting for years, Michelle and Lauren, I'll link to them below. They're also content creators and so we meet once a month just to share what's going on with our businesses, share some goals we're working towards. It's just a really encouraging time. So I gotta wrap up and prepare for that. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. And also the cousin of one of my friends. It's almost time for me to wrap up for the day, but I'm going to try to squeeze in a YouTube thumbnail for actually this video. And we'll see if I can get that done and then we'll transition into my shutdown routine. It's about 4.30 and so I want to look at my list see what I didn't get done, transfer that over to tomorrow and make next day's list. There's just a couple things that I didn't get to and then there's two tasks that I'm probably gonna do after dinner that are not related to my personal business but are related to the travel RV brand that my husband and I run together. So that's more an evening type task. So I'll leave those on there and transfer Kaylin Brooks stuff over to tomorrow. I like to show my migrated tasks by doing a little arrow over the dot. So this is similar to the bullet journal method. And so I've transferred those tasks over to Tuesday. And these are the ones that I will try to do tonight after supper. I may end up responding to some Marco Polos as well. So I'll leave that on there. The next thing I need to do is go into Notion and look at the tasks that I had on today. So I did create some of the blog post pins. So actually I'm going to move that over to tomorrow, change the date, and I did not update that blog post. So that's gonna move over to tomorrow as well. And even though it feels like I'm doing this in two different places, I like to have my master task list here and then I just transfer to what I'm working on for that day in my bullet journal. We did create this thumbnail 
and we are almost done filming this video. So I'm gonna say that is done. And then I get to look at and see, okay, what is coming up tomorrow? The two things that I mentioned. And I really don't have much else because I have a busy day tomorrow running some errands. So we're gonna leave it at that. And then I'm gonna scroll down to my daily habits and put in my work time. Pick a couple feelings. I did feel pretty productive today and pretty happy today. I'll probably be watching a TV show tonight, so I'll fill that in later, and then I have a chance to do these three habits later as well. I'm also going to check my email one last time because I wanna make sure that there's nothing urgent that can't wait until tomorrow, so I'll respond to those. Looks like everything's pretty fine. Nothing major here. And now I will look at my task list and I'll look at what I have going on tomorrow for my Google Calendar and time block and make sure that I can actually fit those tasks in. Thank you so much for spending the day with me. I hope it wasn't too boring, but obviously I spent a lot of my time behind the computer working on things since my business is an online business. But I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. And as promised, I want to talk about how to integrate a potato day into your own life. Even if you don't work from home, you can still have a potato day. The biggest thing is to look at your task list. And I don't know everything that you do. I know we're all juggling a ton of balls. We wear a lot of different hats. But look through the list of tasks that you tend to do on a weekly recurring basis and say what are some things that aren't that hard like don't require a lot of bandwidth or a lot of energy those are the things that you want to put on a potato day and the reason why I like the potato day at the beginning of the week kind of like I said at the beginning of this video is it just really helps you ease into your week and helps you feel like you're still being productive but you're not turning into the superhuman productivity machine that is constantly busy all day trying to cross everything off your list. These are tasks that are simple. They're tasks that maybe you could even do watching a TV show, like folding laundry. So look through your list of tasks and think about what you could put on your own potato day. Because a lot of us, even if you may be a fan of Monday like I am, we're just not quite in the zone yet. And so a potato day, helps us get there. The last thing I wanna mention that is going to make your potato day a lot easier, especially if it's on Monday, is to plan for it ahead of time. Now I have been experimenting with planning on Fridays and sometimes even Saturdays rather than my normal Sunday night planning routine. And I think when you plan Sunday night, like it makes sense, you want to have the weekend to yourself to be able to do those things, to enjoy the weekend. And then right before you go to bed, plan for the week. But the problem is I found that I was just procrastinating planning on Sunday because I didn't want the weekend to end. So something that I've been doing is planning on Friday afternoon when I wrap up my tasks for the week. I kind of look through what do I want to tackle this weekend? What do I want my weekend to look like? And what do I want next week to look like so that I don't have to worry about planning for the next week during the weekend and I can just enjoy the rest and relaxation that weekend should bring to our lives. If you're not an email subscriber, you may not know that I send out a weekly newsletter called The Monday Files that is tips and tricks about productivity and time management and personal growth that helps get you in the right mindset for your week. So if you're not on the list yet, I'll put the link in the description so you can sign up. But other than that, this is a wrap on our potato day. If you liked this kind of vlog style video, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.